From Wish TV, Indiana's education station, this is a News 8 Education Spotlight Special. Hello everyone, welcome to this News 8 Education Spotlight. I'm Phil Sanchez. And I'm Alexis Rogers. We're so proud to be Indiana's education station, committed to bringing you the best, most in-depth coverage of education issues all throughout the state. For tens of thousands of students, classes are already back in session, mm -hmm. and that includes Beach Grove, where Wednesday marked the first day of the new school year. But for the vast majority of parents, they were in uh, scrambling of the final days of summer vacation and getting ready for back to school. News 8's Camila Fernandez spent time with them. Families are doing back to school shopping, but parents I spoke to say with prices on the rise, they're worried about being able to afford school supplies. It's hard times right now. People's not working and uh, it costs a lot to get uh, supplies right now. Valerie Parker says getting ready for the new school year hasn't been easy. To help make sure her three kids are ready to go back to school, she made sure to stock up on school supplies during Monday's Indianapolis Public Schools Back to School Festival. Right now, the way gas is, for the economy going, it's good. It's very good for all this going on right here today. Even though gas go up, you still got to pay for gas either way it goes. So I just try to manage it the best way I can. So events like this helps me save money for gas because it helps out with school supplies and free books. So it, it does help a lot. According to the National Retail Federation, this year families plan to spend $864 on average for back to school shopping, with the largest expenses being electronics and clothes. In 2019, families plan to spend on average $697. That's almost $200 less. Everything went up. Everything went up. <laughs> Christopher Mims says the impact of COVID-19 on schools has been difficult. She could learn a lot if she had to be at home, but if she, um, if she had to go to school, I brought a prepper up right, and I just was, my fear was to bring COVID home on, on some clothes or anything that I wear, because I never felt the symptom. He says he's prepared for another school mask mandate, should the schools need it to keep their doors open and keep everyone healthy. If it's the rules, if it's for our benefit, for our health, I don't even worry about it. I just go through with it and just pray that, you know, everybody stay safe. That's all. We've learned to sort of never say never at this point and just be ready to respond, keeping the safety and the health of our students and our staff as our first priority. Are you excited to start school again? Yes. Why? How come? <laughs> that because I'm so excited to be in first grade. We're excited to kick off the, the start of the year. You know, I think it should feel uh, relatively normal in terms of what our students get to experience and our staff get to experience. That said, we know we've just got to always be ready for things that may may change. But quite frankly, over the last two years, we've gotten pretty good at that. I'm a little bit nervous, but I'm also hopeful. I'm hoping it's good because last year it was a lot teacher shortage and everything else. So that it makes you a little bit nervous. Camilla Fernandez, Wish TV, WishTV.com, and follow us on Facebook. Well, IPS is the largest school district in central Indiana, and it's facing new challenges this year, including redrawing districts and rebuilding test scores after COVID. Superintendent Alicia Johnson talks about those with News 8's Daybreak anchor, Scott Sander. You've seen friends and colleagues have today as the first day. IPS goes back when? We go back Monday. You ready? Well, I better be. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're getting excited. Um, I want to jump in with what the board did yesterday. Uh, holding a review session, laying out its three goals for the year, at least the primary goals. Um, increase math and uh, English proficiency, uh, and eliminate some achievement gaps, and the graduation rate of 87% by 2025. Mm -hmm. You'll be the one tasked with implementing all of that. Are, are those achievable? Are they fair? You know, those are really ambitious goals that we're working toward. They were set actually uh, last summer by our board, and so what we're doing is continuing to update them on our mm. progress. But we're excited. Um, iLearn results were released across the state here the last week or so, and we saw um, some forward momentum and, and positive achievement in both English language arts and math. In fact, return to pre-pandemic levels in English language arts and pretty close in math. Uh, and some of the highest growth year over year in Marion County. So we're excited about the strides we're making. Still a lot of work to do, but we're going to celebrate the progress in the right direction. It's been remarkable what educators have had to pull off in the pandemic, going from all in person and never thinking about fully online, to then going online, to then a hybrid and other versions depending on the districts. Now you have to, to come up with that way to, to catch kids up mm -hmm. if they need that. And That's as right. we've seen with the iLearn results, some are, some still need it. How sure. do you pull that off? 
you know, is an all hands on deck approach. Uh, we're excited last semester, for example, we piloted some tutoring programs in some of our schools. Mm -hmm. We're actually excited we're gonna take some of the ESSER, the federal dollars that schools have received and offer that to all of our students. So it's called Tutoring for All. Mm -hmm. So every single student in the district, free of charge, families can access additional tutoring supports in partnership with an organization called Tutor by Teachers, and IUPUI, other organizations. And some or all of that is online is right as well, correct? Yep, if it's with our uh, sort of you know, free available any time that's a virtual module and then we have some in-person tutoring opportunities with other local partners as well uh, what are challenges what are opportunities this year as you look ahead say the first week month but then by the end of the year you want to be able to say what to families no I want to be able to say we have continued to build in our momentum that our students had a really strong you know academic experience during the school year hopefully one that has felt you know will feel consistent uh, and not interrupted uh, so we are hoping for the best, but planning for any shifts we might need to make. Uh, as you well know, because you watch the news, uh, State House is in a special session right now. Mm -hmm. uh, superintendents are never far from sort of their unofficial lobbying hats as well. Mm -hmm. Have you thought of what you might need to say to the state lawmakers when they have their full session come January? Uh, absolutely, we're thinking about those things. We know it's a budget session, and yeah. we know uh, our state is fortunate to have quite a surplus at this time, and so myself, along with many of our colleagues, will be advocating for additional investment in K-12 education. We know we are going to set the stage for the future of our state. Well, as students return to the classrooms, Indiana districts face the enormous challenge of hiring enough staff for each school. We've talked about the teacher shortage for several years now, but take a look at these numbers this week from the Department of Education's online job bank. There are nearly 2,200 open teacher positions still listed. Add in principals and other support staff. That number balloons to more than 3,600. News 8's Cody Adams shows us just how difficult that hiring process has been. We had a, a recent opening and I believe that we had three applications. Dr. Nicole Ali is the superintendent for North Putnam School Corporation. She says it's an ongoing issue they're trying to solve as less people go into the profession. I can tell you when I was a building principal 12, 15 years ago, I would take home a paper box every year with applications uh, resumes and so it, it is real and even then more so at the um, elementary or the high school level where positions are more specialized and subject critical. Kevin O'Rourke is the principal at Lebanon High School. He says they have to get creative when it comes to hiring teachers. For example, maybe we have a special needs teacher that has a background in math and we're hiring a math teacher and that person is great with working with kids and a certain type of student that we're looking for, then we'll work on an emergency license with that individual. Dr. Ali believes there are several reasons less people are applying to open jobs. The demands on the time, the um, requirements that have to be met with regards to curriculum and not that there never were requirements that had to be met but the pressure to meet those with standardized testing is just at a different level than what it was. O'Rourke says he'll keep working to get more great people into teaching because of the impact he knows it has on really, kids. Really it's very uplifting to know that you have the opportunity to make a positive impact and truly a change in an individual and that change in that individual could be generational because it changes not just them but their children and on and on and so it is an incredibly important and noble profession and I have you know the deepest respect for our teachers and the work that they do. Coming up, getting your kids back on the right sleep schedule for school. We take that question and more to a leading pediatrician next on our Education Spotlight Special. You're watching Wish TV, Indiana's only statewide TV news network. Welcome back to this News 8 Education Spotlight Special. If you're a parent, you know back to school means big changes for a child's daily routine. Sleeping, eating, and the added stress of homework and after school activities. So what can you do to help ease the stress of those? We're proud to be education, Indiana's education station, so we have some answers for you. And let's welcome in Dr. Suzanne Grannon, a pediatrician with Community Health Network. Doctor, good to see you. So we know that the kids are getting ready to go back to school. So I want to start with a sleep schedule. Just how critical, in your opinion, is that regular sleep schedule for kids in, in all grades? It's a great question. And making sure that your children get enough sleep is really crucial to keeping them healthy. Um, and this really starts with establishing a consistent um, bedtime routine, and that includes turning off the screens. 
Okay, so, so how do you know how much is enough? And uh, I mean, is it different for each? Obviously, it's different for each age group, but um, what would you say is, is the, the, the amount of sleep they should get and at what age? We base our recommendations off of the, um, the American Academy of Pediatrics, and um, they've looked at kids at kindergarten through grade six, typically. Those kids should get nine to 12 hours of sleep each night, and then you go grades seven through 12, those kiddos require about eight to 10 hours of sleep every night. That's tough to do. Yeah, it really is, with their busy schedules. Yeah, yeah. So, so what about things before school start, like immunizations and, and physicals? That can be a big thing right now as well, right? Yes. Uh, so, you know, parents are, are usually good about kind of trying to get in before uh, school starts, but um, I, staying up to date on immunizations is always a way to keep our kids healthy. So getting their routine childhood vac vaccinations, including uh, the flu and COVID, um, if they're eligible, is one of the best things that you can do to protect your kids against the spread of infectious diseases. And during the pandemic, we really saw a decrease in the amount of children who received their vaccines on time. So this has become even more critical. And then in, once they're in the schools, um, one way to stay healthy is making sure everybody's washing their hands. Um, and so hand washing with uh, soap and water for at least 20 seconds is one of the easiest ways that we know to prevent the spread of illness in the classroom and elsewhere. And if there's um, hand washing isn't possible, then hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol also is the next best way to kill germs that cause illnesses. Fair enough. So, so something that I know is really important to you is, is, is diet, and it's, it's very important for kids. But what about small kids? Because I have to be honest, I have an 11-year-old and an 8-year-old. It's tough to get them to eat the right things. <laughs> It sure is, and and I really think that you know starting with with things that are easy and accessible are really important. And so eating a good breakfast um, is really kind of sets the tone for the whole day. So ideally, a, a breakfast that includes some protein, dairy, and or some whole grains um, improves their ability to continue to concentrate throughout the day. Um, that followed by obviously a nutritious lunch and some healthy after school snacks. And then um, we, we definitely recommend a family dinner time when possible. Going back to school has always been uh, an anxious time of year for a lot of kids, but after two years of COVID and, and worries about school safety and everything that's been going on, I would imagine it's even more important right now. So what's your message to parents out there who maybe are dealing with kids that, that deal with a lot of anxiety? Yeah, we, we know that this this pandemic has been especially hard on our um, our tweens and our teens. So um, middle schoolers and high schoolers have, have really, um, you know, suffered during this time. And we know that there's a lot of pressures out there for these kids. Homework, tests, sports, and social, um, you know, pressures all can be a source of stress and anxiety for them. So really just uh, asking parents to keep an eye out for signs and symptoms of stress um, and ways to manage their, their kids' anxiety, tapping into therapists and, and counselors in the schools, and then just keeping a close eye on kids' social media use and keeping the lines of communication open so you can identify and address any issues early on. Dr. Grandin, I have one more question for you before I let you go, and I appreciate you taking some time. What's one thing most parents forget right now that you'd want them to keep top of mind before heading back to school? That, um, you know, school is where our kids spend a vast majority of their time. And so if we can keep them healthy and engaged in their schoolwork, not only does that, you know, provide them a normalizing environment where they can learn and excel, but um, I think that's where we want to keep all of our kids is, is healthy and in school. So, you know, utilizing some of these tips to kind of uh, set them up for success is, is what I recommend. Good conversation. Dr. Suzanne Grannon, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. We have even more from Dr. Grannon online right now, including the role of hydration and exercise in your child's learning. Just scan that QR code on the right hand side of your screen. It'll take you to wishtv.com. You'll find a story with Dr. Grannon's photo at the top of the homepage. Coming up, keeping schools safe, the push for security changes, and more after the tragedy in Texas. That's next on our News 8 Education Spotlight Special. You're watching Wish TV, Indiana's only statewide TV news network. Welcome back to this Education Spotlight Special as we turn now to school security. 
Indiana school districts are ramping up their school security systems after a string of mass shootings all around the country, including the one in Uvalde, Texas. But how do you balance security with mental health? My teammates Jasmine Miner digs into the challenge for students. Across the board from those I talk to, there is growing concern that even just being on a playground as a kid, even within school walls, just isn't safe anymore. In fact, one school resource officer tells me he's got elementary kids coming up to him asking, will you keep me safe from a mass shooter? It's all about the upgrades. A person doesn't need a key anymore. They'll be able to just click on a sensor and open the oh, door. Oh, okay. And so, you know, one of the things that people often talk about is having to fumble with the key to lock the door if there's a, you know, if there's a situation. But even with some of the more obvious features like cameras or sensors. There were things that you did not see and you would not know to see. It doesn't stop there. Wayne Township Superintendent Dr. Jeff Butt says they were able to get a $100,000 grant from the state for school safety resources. Hardening of schools is not the best spend expenditure uh, of the, the resources that we have and does not provide the greatest um, safety increase. He says it's a helpful start, but technology is only one part of it. Will you help me? Will you protect me? Will you make sure that no one hurts me? That is the conversation, especially when you start talking about, you know, elementary school age kids. For John Akers, a school resource officer at the Genius School and a man who has spent 26 years protecting and serving the community, he says in general, more schools need heightened security, but... I think cameras and those type of things, yes, we need those, but if I gotta choose between the two, I'm gonna invest in my child because that camera is gonna need to be upgraded in three years. It's mental health resources for kids that are more important to him in order to change the narrative of mass shootings in the long run. Still, the more immediate solution is more difficult. How do you manage that that need, that 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 grief of of why can't you fix it? Um, the answer to the question, why can't you fix it? is because it's always changing. That is why we as law enforcement are always training, are always preparing for what's next. You know, when yeah. you walk into a different building versus like you walk in like it's colorful. It's right. like, oh, this is great. Over at Phelan Academy, Principal Jabaris Carrion says after the Uvalde shooting, they've often encouraged teachers to keep rooms colorful, happy, so kids remember the fun over the fear. Once a quarter, we're just always looking. It may not be many changes every quarter, but there is just a, a process of looking to ensure that our buildings are safe. Every few months, the principal says they reevaluate their current security. You're able to look around and see there's visibility into um, every classroom and every hallway. It's been a heartstring, right? It pulls on your heartstrings. It's a, it's a daily um, reminder um, to just continue to push for the right thing. How do we overcome the fear hmm. of what could happen? I don't know. I don't have a solid answer for that. What I can say is that police officers that are passionate about their job and choose this profession, we run to the fear. We run into the fire. We run into the chaos. If that's not what you're ready to do, it's gonna be difficult. Well, I talked to the administrators about the secondary trauma that can come from kids just being aware of mass shootings from afar. Wayne Township tells me they have something called an impact period. They stay with the same teacher throughout their entire high school career, and then they use this period to have some of these conversations, seek support, and even counseling. I'm Jasmine Miner for Wish TV, IT Mate. All right, coming up, how you can help us stock paper and pencils in classrooms right now to get the year started right. That's next here on Indiana's Education Station. You're watching Wish TV, Indiana's only statewide TV news network. Welcome back, Wish TV is Indiana's Education Station. That's why we're excited to partner with Teachers Treasures for the Great Paper Push. This is our seventh year of the project. We help collect money and school supplies and Teachers Treasures gets them to teachers to use in their classrooms free of charge. I think it's so important for all of us to every day think about the teachers, the work that they're doing, and it's tough, right? We all know this. But to let them know that the community is behind them and um, whether it's a pencil or a backpack or paper, those things matter uh, in their occupation and that profession. And so we're welcoming a lot of new teachers to the system again this year. And I think 
just to having them understand it's just it's just not that school it's really the entire community that's here for them we want you to join us donate mm -hmm. supplies or money even form a team collect even more things to give you can drop those off at any of our sponsor locations just scan that qr code on the screen right now for full details on how you could be a part of the great paper push or go to wishtv.com slash paper it's a great great group oh yeah and you know, AC always has his golf challenge and they've donated so much money. Over $3 million over the years with their golf outings every year. Hey, Good we stuff. want you to be encouraged. Thank you so much for joining us for this News 8 Education Spotlight Special. And we'll be back with you with Indiana's best education coverage throughout the year right here on Wish TV.